So the peacemaker now is joined by Hailwenta. And as they're traveling east, now they come into the territory of the Cayugueona. Or the people of swampy land, Cayugueona people, or the Cayuga nation. And as they're traveling this way, they're spreading this message of peace. This idea of peace, power, and righteousness. And this Guyanus Hatgawa, this great law, where the people all have the right to pursue a healthy mind, body, and spirit. And that nothing should interfere with that. Well, Atataro, in his evil ways, was trying to do all that he could to stop them. And he used his dark magic and his dark mind to throw obstacles in their way as they traveled. And one of the things that he did was he had one of his helpers go and attack Heowentot's daughter and used a blowgun and poisoned her and killed her. And then he had another one accident happen he made it happen so his pregnant daughter Hyowentas pregnant daughter was at a lacrosse game and they say that she was watching a lacrosse ball landed at her feet the ball landed at her feet and those players are trained to just play it through and they did and it was a terrible accident tragedy that when they played it through she got trampled and killed her and she lost her daughter, she lost her child as well. So that was Hale Wentas, daughter and grandchild, both killed at once. So news of this gets to Hayawenta. And the story says that what Hayawenta did was that he got into a canoe. And as he got into this canoe, he didn't take a paddle with him and that he was just devastated and grief stricken and that as he got into this canoe with no paddle he just floated around all over and he was just crying and you know that this canoe just keeps going from place to place. And every once in a while, it bumps into the shore and being all sad and just not caring, Hill Wintot just pushes himself off and goes wherever and that it's this time in his life that he's just having a rough time and kind of giving up and the story goes that as he's doing this he happens to bump into the shore and he's looking at the shore and he sees a bunch of fresh water shells, clam shells, and that he starts to take these shells and he starts to collect them and he puts them in his canoe. And pretty soon he's got more and he pushes off again and he's got more and more. Pretty soon he's got a big pile of these shells in his boat and he collects them. And while he's collecting them, it's kind of taken his mind for a short time off his troubles. And still, he's just floating around though. 
from place to place aimlessly. And next thing you know, the peacemaker is looking all over for him and trying to find him. And he wants to help his friend. And he's just in this sad way. Just constantly in sorrow. And it's a bad way to be. And we're going to take a minute. And leave him. In this way. As we talk about a different part of the story. And you know. This. Hewenta. Does have a great mind. And is a great help to the peacemaker and the peacemaker as I said on the border lines of Cayuga people the Cayuga territory and the Onondawaka territory the peacemaker is looking for him and he just continues to float around well, meanwhile, we'll go to where the peacemaker is. And the story continues that as he's traveling around and going from place to place, he's trying to spread this message of peace and at the same time looking for his partner. And it happens that he comes upon a house, again, that's all by itself, a single person house, again, we run into that. And that this single person house, there lived a lady by herself. And she's got this little bark house where she's staying. And that what she does is she's out here living and she's cooking up a storm. And she cooks like a grandma. And I don't know if it's the same with everybody, but I know my grandma was awesome, was the best cook. My Uxod was known for that. Well, this lady did the same thing. And she's cooking at her house and while she's doing this these warriors are out there and you know they can smell it from a long ways away and as they are traveling along they smell this awesome food and they're hungry because they're not eating they're not making a fire and they're just eating parched cornmeal and bugs <laughs> so uh, real cooking oh they can smell it a long way and these warriors show up at this lady's house and when they come there she says oh little old lady you know oh sadakoni swadakoni she says and as Ongwenwe people when people come to our house it's our way to feed them. If we're going to have dinner or it's dinner time, then they eat too, regardless of how little or how much you have, you share. So we all live like that. Even now, we're like that. So to say no and to turn to deny it, is kind of insulting and so these warriors you know they're hungry anyways oh uh, and those warriors come right in oh geez and she tells them she says no fighting here and she tells them you can pay me with your food you can pay me for this food and how you can pay me is i want to hear what you're doing what you're up to 
and she liked to hear their stories, their war stories. And just as they get done talking to her and they finish their meal, all of a sudden they keel over dead because she poisoned their food. And she's pretty evil herself in living this way. So along comes the peacemaker and he comes to her house and oh she says oh Sadakoni come in and eat and he goes in there and she asks him she says you know she tells him she says oh you can pay me by telling me your war stories and he says before he takes a bite even he says I have no war stories and he says I'm here and I'm spreading a message of peace and he tells her guy in his hat go off and she says I you know I don't believe it and she says I don't know how it's gonna work tell me and he says well I'll tell you it's gonna work like this and he says that your people all live in long houses, right? She goes, yeah, that's true. And he says, okay. He says, let's say, let's take a house, for instance. These guys all are related, right? She says, yeah. They're all same grandmother. They're all aunts and uncles and nephews and so forth. If something's going to happen... to this house, everybody talks about it and they all have to agree what's gonna happen, right? She says, yeah. And if there's a dispute, who settles it? She says, usually the old, oldest lady, oldest woman in that house will set it straight. And he says, that's right. He says, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring these five nations into a house of peace and that this house of peace each nation will have their own fire to cook and keep warm that in this house of peace this family won't steal from this family or this family won't attack that family that if there's something pertaining just to this family they can take care of it themselves but if it pertains to the whole house they'll all talk about it she says, you know, that makes a lot of sense. He says, everybody lives like this anyways. Why not extend it over the whole land? Everyone will work together. And it'll be a time of peace, power, and righteousness. That everyone has a right to pursue a healthy mind, body, and spirit. And you know, that woman says, I accept that message. It makes sense. I can see that happening. I can see it working. And she says, from now on, when people come to my house, instead of wanting to hear war stories, and instead of wanting to cause them harm, I'll tell the warriors of your goodness hat go off. I'll tell the warriors of your message of peace and because of this she became known as Jigonsase new face because she changed her way Jigonsase spread this message of peace and became the mother of nations